Hi there and welcome to another PST Tuts Plus Spoon Fed Photoshop tutorial. I'm Gavin Steele and in today's quick tip tutorial I'm going to take you through creating your own leather texture using filters. The original tutorial by Mohammed can be found at pst.tutsplus.com and here's the final product. You can see we've got this realistic leather um, texture here. It's got a little bit of wear on it where it's rubbed or been touched. And all the steps as per usual can be found over at psd.tutsplus.com and do check out our other videos in the video section for lots more quick tips and great tutorials. Load up Photoshop, I've created a file that is 500 by 500 pixels and we're going to just flip our foreground and background colors here and we're going to start by heading up to filter and just before we do that I'm going to double click open up my background layer. We're going to head up to filter texture and we're going to choose the stained glass texture. We're going to leave all the defaults set, 10 for size, thickness set to 4, and light intensity set to 3. Click on OK. And here we have the building blocks for our leather texture. So now we can head over and create a new layer. And we're going to fill this with white. So I'm going to just flip these over, and G on the keyboard brings up my paint bucket tool. Click inside. We've now got a white layer. I'm going to reduce the opacity down to 50%. We're going to flip our colors back. So black is our foreground color, and white is our background color. And then we're going to repeat that filter. And you can see up here, we can just press on the Mac, Command F or Control F. I think it is on the PC. We're just going to repeat our stained glass effects. I'm going to click on that. And we get this kind of disjointed um, look. And again, we can alter this. Command Alt F on a Mac would have brought up our little uh, stained glass. And we could have reduced the size a little bit. But I'm pretty happy with that for now. And um, with those two layers, so I'm going to press Shift and select those two layers, and then I'm going to hit Command E or Control E on a PC to merge those layers into one layer. And then I'm going to head up and add some noise. So we're going to go to Filter, Noise, and then we're going to select Add Noise. Okay, and we're going to reduce this down to 20%. We're going to have it set to Uniform and Monochromatic, we can keep checked. And then let's click on OK. Now we're going to select All, so Command. Um, a, and that's going to have these marching ants going around all of our document, and then Command C to copy or Control C on a PC. We've copied that to the clipboard. Now we're going to head over to our channels panel, and then in our channels we're going to create a new channel. So we can come down here, and it's called Alpha. And then we're going to paste Command V. We're going to paste our um, texture into that channel. Then we can click on our RGB up at the top to return to our background layer. And we're going to click Edit, and sorry, let me just select that. We're going to click Edit, and we're going to come down to Fill, and we're going to make sure that we're going to use Color from the drop-down selection, and then we're going to pick our color for our leather. I've got six six five three one B here, light brown color. Hopefully. That'll look good. Obviously, you can choose your own color, but I'm going to click on OK there. And then I'm just going to double check these blending options. My mode is set to normal, and my opacity is set to 100. And click on OK. With this color selected, we're now going to apply some lighting effects. Head up to Filter, Render, and Lighting Effects. And I'm going to bring this over like so. Now, we need to make sure that we're on Spotlight. And I'm going to set my negative to 7, 69, and 0, 69, 0, 8. And make sure you select the alpha channel from the texture channel down at the bottom. And then reduce your height um, down to about 20. Now, I'm just going to get rid of some of these. We don't need all of these yet. We're going to add these in a second. It's too many spotlights. So. I'm going to delete that, grab this. Again, make sure we set it back to Spotlight. That looks pretty good. I'm just going to double check these. Nope, that's changed. Yep, 7, 69, 0, 69, 0, 8. Alpha 1 channel, that's the important part, and reduce that down to 20. And we're going to click on OK. And you can see we've got this faint kind of leather coming through. It looks like crocodile skin or snake skin because my pattern's so big. Obviously, if you've got a larger canvas, you might create smaller um, leather little patches or little bumps in the skin. We're going to head back up to filter, go back to render, and we're going to apply a Omni light now. So we're going to select Omni from the drop down there. And we're going to add a couple of lights. So grab the little, eye, um, little uh, bulb down here. 
drag it up to the top. We're going to drag one to the bottom left and one to the top left like so. And then we can just reshape these like so. Just make it a little bit bigger. I'm going to grab this one here. Change the direction. Again, make that a bit bigger. And this top one. Okay. And then the middle one. Just going to increase its size a little bit. And then double check the settings. We're still using the alpha one. We're going to increase our negative to 17, 16, something like that. And 0, 69, 0, 8, and alpha 1, 20, and click on OK. And now we've got a couple of patches here in our leather. It's not enough, so I've got to go, and I'm going to undo that, and I'm going to go back into that tool and just play around with it again. So back into our render and our lighting effects, and this is just playing around with these little bulbs, trying to get a nice spread going across. like so and again just playing around with them getting good coverage of light Okay, and try that out and just keep trying, keep playing around with it. And that looks a little bit better. So we've got some darker areas and some lighter areas. And you can see, in particular, mine looks a little bit like you know, a big animal, a big lizard, rather than a small snake or something like that. But for now, that looks pretty good and we're going to move on. So let's hit Command D to deselect so we're not selecting that area anymore. Then we're going to change our background and foreground color to white. We press D and then X like so. Then we're going to activate our gradient tool. So I'm going to come over here and grab the gradient tool. And we're going to choose radial, which is the second one along here. And then we're going to have a radial with white to transparent. So come down to our list here and it should be the second one along foreground to transparent and our foreground color is set to white. So select that one. We can just click away. And then we're going to create a new layer. Let's come back to our layers panel. Create a new layer and we're going to draw our gradient okay or our gradients should I say there's going to be a few so I'm going to have one down here smaller one here another one here here a little one here and so on. And these are going to be the areas that look like they're touched or they've been scuffed or just slightly smooth, that kind of effect that you get with leather. So we're going to change the opacity of that layer now down to 4%, so all the way down. Just add 4 there. Okay, and this will add just subtle lighting to that leather just to give that impression. We can bring that up a little bit. And you can just see it just taking effect. But around 4 to 5 should be just enough, a little detail, just to bring out those little spots there. Okay, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to have our lighting effects filtered. I'm going to add small border to the image, so let's move on to that. Okay, now we're moving on to that, but you'll have noticed that we're not going to create a border. The lighting effects we've done so far have created that border for us, and you might want to remove that. So this step is actually about removing that border. So we're going to head up to our image and then our canvas size. And then all we're going to do is pixels, we're going to reduce the width, minus 6, I'm sorry, relative, so minus 6, and our height, again, minus 6, everything else looks fine, and just click on OK, yep, and we're going to click on proceed. And you can see we've just cut off that border that was created 
um, from our lighting effect. Now we can choose to change the color. We just head into our hue and saturation. So again, if I bring up uh, my adjust adjustments panel here and you come down to hue and saturation and make sure you set colorize and we can start to change the color of that leather. So if it's a handbag or something like that, you might want to just start playing around with that color or you just might want to make it a slightly darker or more saturated color. Just darken it right down or lighten it up and so on until you get an effect that you're happy with. And that's it. Mine happens to be a you know, rather large kind of leather effect, uh, maybe from a larger animal, but the original has this nice smaller um, leather kind of feel to it. So do check out the tutorial over at psd.tutsplus.com. I've been Gavin Steele taking you through Mohammed's quick tip on creating your own leather textures using filters in Photoshop, and I hope you enjoyed that. <laughs>